Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I am Shell Bell and this is Shell Bell's channel. If you are new to my channel, I post a lot about real care babies and a lot about reborn babies. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make some nappies for the real care babies. So here are the Real Care 2, Real Care 2 Plus and Real Care 3 nappies. So you'll notice that they have a yellow and a green sensor in them. In order to make a new set of these, you must have an original set like I have here. You need to get the RFIDs out because I don't know where you can get this, this separately. So you're going to have to cut up a set of nappies that you've already got. And it also makes a good template. To make the Generation 6 nappies, you don't have to have the nappies or have a template or anything like that because these are just a magnet inside. So you can purchase magnets from wherever you can find them in the right size and sew them in. At the back you'll see some that I've already cut out in some prints. I have made these before and I decided that they fit funny on the Real Cares. So I didn't really like the fit of these ones so I went ahead and made my own pattern which I literally just traced this cloth nappy here on a tracing sheet. And now I have a pattern. Oh, I think it goes this way. And if it's a bit too big, that's fine. Trim it down. Do whatever you want to it. Have a trial with some scrap fabric. See how it goes. If you don't have a cloth nappy, I don't see why you couldn't make one out of a disposable. You just have to trace the edges of the nappy and that will give you a template. So I've already made my template, but like I said, all you do is get this, um, fold it out, hold it down and trace it. Then cut out your template and then put that on your fabric and trace it. This is uh, like, this can be a piece of fabric, a piece of paper, a piece of cardboard, whatever you got laying around. I like to use this, uh, I can't even think of what it's called, uh, but I like to use it so you can see through your fabric and see what pattern you're going to be getting. Alrighty, let's get started. I'm going to make a set of these ones right now. I have already made a bunch of these up, but I haven't put anything in them because these are going to be like a mix and match. So you can choose the ones that you want, and once you've chosen, then I will just sew the, the correct magnet or sensor or whatever into it. I don't have any sensors available. I've only got magnets available for the Gen 6s. But if you want this one and this one, and I've put two black magnets in them, then you'll have to, like, I'll have to remake them or I'd have to make another one. So if I just leave them and you choose those two, then I can put a white sensor and a black sensor or a blue sensor, as they're supposed to be called. I call them black because I've only got black Velcro. Uh, and then yeah, so it just works that way. So you choose two and then I'll put the sensors in and then they'll match. Now you've cut one of your fabric pieces out. You're going to get your backing. I'm just using a little bit of fleece for the back. You can use toweling, flannelette, anything you really want. I'm just using up some scraps. This one's got a little bit of thin toweling on it. Change of plans. We have a new fabric selected. I've got the fleece on the bottom and then the fabric that I've chosen, well, that, that um, my friend has chosen on the top and they're facing each other. I've got my template on. I've decided that I'm going to have this Mickey head on the front and this Mickey head on the front. So this you can see what I've written it says fabric print this way up which means the fabric needs to be running this way so this is going to be the front so this little Mickey will be on the front and the and this little Mickey will be on the front just remember that the uh, velcro tabs come over so you will lose about this much either side so try not to put little pieces of um, the fabric like the print that you want there because you will lose it when the fabric comes over but also keep that in mind that these parts here come over the top so whatever's on these parts if you can get anything cool then they will be on the top here 
<laughs> a little bit confusing but that's why I've written that the fabric goes this way up. Let's cut this and then we're going to start sewing. You can also use scissors to cut it out. This is just my special cutting mat and my offer cutter that I absolutely love. Now I'm going to pin it or flip it. So if you want to use pins, that's fine. I don't use pins. I use little clips. So I'm just going to clip it so it stays together. If you're feeling professional, don't clip it. That's fine. Uh, it's totally up to you. Whatever you want to do, whatever works for you. I'm going to start at the bottom, so the biggest side of the two, and I'm going to start about here, and I'm going to sew all the way around till about here. So if I even these up a little bit, I'm going to sew from this one all the way around to about this one and leave about this much gap. It doesn't really matter how much gap you leave, you just need to be able to turn it inside out and then we're going to add our sensor in here later. So enough to do all that with. I just want you to watch this part here. As I go around, I tend to lift the foot up and turn it, and that just helps turn the corner a lot easier. So once the needle is in, I can lift the foot, turn the fabric, and put the foot back down, and then it changes the direction of the foot, which makes it easier. If you have trouble uh, remembering where you're supposed to stop, mark it with some uh, like a pen or some chalk or whatever you got, or you can use the pins like I have and use that as a marker as well. So about there, and then I'm just going to reverse to finish it off. I should have reversed to start it, but I didn't. I always forget. <laughs> Now we're going to have a look and see if we need any cutting, any bits that need to be cut off. This one's pretty good, I don't see much that really needs to be cut off, but trimming the edges always helps it fold in later on. There's, like I said, not really much that needs to come off, so I'm happy with that, it can be folded in now. All we're going to do is find the opening. Put your hand in, grab the other half, and pull it out. Looks like a nappy now, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. So we definitely need the iron and a good little helper for turning things out is this chopstick that I've got. It has a thick end and a thin end. Because we're dealing with thick edges, I'll just use the thick end at the moment. Just go in and you can press all of it out so that it's coming out and the last one. All right, I think that's pretty good. I'll show you what we're getting at. Like I said, it needs an iron, but this is 
what it's going to look like at the end. If you really want to do it that way, you can, but most snappies go that way. That is what our finished product is kind of going to look like, but a lot nicer and neater because we're going to iron it right now. Just going to iron it. My iron on it is just on whatever temperature. It doesn't have steam. It, does, it can have steam. It doesn't really matter. Just however you want to do it. Other than that, so the end result is we just want it ironed. <laughs> Fold this part in so that when you sew it in later, it's ready to go. Alrighty, I'm happy with that. Alrighty, we have our new nappies. And our old nappies. So we need the RFIDs out of these and we need to know where to place them. So, yes they're heaps bigger but I kind of like the way that these ones sit compared to the other ones. I feel like they're cuter and they're more like bulky like a real baby snappy. So I'm going to have them about there maybe a little bit further this way. And uh, so there's two options here. You can, oh, there's more than two. You can cut this square out and sew that square with the patch onto the nappy as it is. Or you can unpick the um, square and sew that on. So, like, you can just cut the whole thing, including the other side of the nappy, off and put it on like that. Or you can cut just uh, like unpick just the green and the yellow patch and sew them on or my option was just to sew it in sew it in a square and then I was just going to put a little piece of yellow ribbon on this one and green on this one just mainly so that if she was doing like a, a test program or something and you needed to have a certain color nappy on you knew which one was what because these are two different nappies you'll learn that this is the green one and this is the yellow one but like I said in case you needed to do something, I got some ribbon and I thought I would put the ribbon on to show the difference of the colour of the IDs or RFIDs. Alrighty, we're going to unpick this one. I've never seen one of these RFID nappy thingy bobbies inside, so I'm guessing it's just going to be like a standard ID. That's kind of exactly what I expected it to be. Alright, this one's going to go in this one. So this is the yellow nappy. We just need to remember that. Maybe if I do pick this off, it will be easier just to sew that on. I'll be back after I unpick this. I've unpicked it and I, I don't know, this part over here, other than this part, the rest of it's pretty good. Oh, now it's good. I've lined it up the best I can. I'm aiming to have the same distance from the back of these ones because I think that's where the, yeah, I feel like that's where it's going to sit best. Okay, so I'm going to sew this, the square. You can pin it on if you want to. Um, use some pins, keep it in place. I will just sew this. There it is, the final product. It is 
slightly wonky. It wouldn't be slightly wonky if um, otherwise I wouldn't have made it because that's how I make things. <laughs> but now it's fully functional for a real care baby. And the uh, Velcro, there's a lot more Velcro compared to last time because that was one of the complaints that the Velcro wasn't working on the old nappies anymore. included with um, with the sensor and all the velcro but we still have to add velcro to this one so I've got four pieces of velcro two of them obviously are the for the back are the hard side of the velcro and then the other two go on the front on the pattern side are the soft parts again if you put these on the other way, that's totally fine. It doesn't really matter. One tip is to get it as far out as you can so that when these are closing, it will hold the fabric on um, and it doesn't leave a gap because I have sewn some of them a little further and it kind of it holds down but this part isn't held down. Does that make sense? It's it's not secure. Like, it, it's secure, but it looks like it's not. So you want this to be as close to the end of the fabric as possible. If you don't like sewing much, you can also try the stick-on or the glue um, versions. I don't know how they'll go. It's whatever you figure out they are like. I prefer to sew though. Hi Pokin. What are you doing? Did you get some sticks? that is how you make the real care two nappies so they're just the same they're all velcroed up the tabs are on the inside like I said you could also do the ribbon idea that I thought of so you know which colors what or you can just sew them in you can get a whole new yellow piece of um, fabric or you can just remember like if you were to put a blue patch in here and a I don't even know if you can remember that the blue is the yellow one and that the red one is the green one. I don't know if you could remember that or not, but I wouldn't. So that's why I wanted to put the patches in so that you could um, figure out which one was what. So for the generation six, I have two nappies here already made with their Velcro and everything. All I have to do is add their magnets in for them and some velcro so that it stays on so here's my velcro um, instead of using a blue patch oops instead of using a blue patch and a white patch i'm using a black patch and a white patch and the black is being substituted for the blue because it's easier to get black so it's about five centimeters in width this velcro and we're only going to use the soft side of the velcro because the babies have the hard part on their backs we're going to cut about it's about a square so probably about five centimeters yep about five centimeters maybe yeah about five centimeters because we want it to be about a square and then we will sew it on to the back part on the other side 
and the magnet will be inside it. So it's very easy to do and I'll show you how to do it. When I'm making the nappies, I like to make them the right way, like I said, in case you need to program the baby um, and something's going on. So that one's going to go there, I want that one on that one, and then this one is going to go on here. So what I'm going to do is do what I was doing before, slide the, oopsies, I need this one back. Want to slide the magnet inside and line it up. So we followed all of the, the same steps. Oh, actually, this is the wrong way. Apologies. It needs to go this way. Slide it in, line it up. And then we're just going to put this patch as high as we can. So we, when we close the hole up, we want to actually be sewing over this Velcro patch as well. And we're going to keep the magnet part in there so that it doesn't move out of the way. We want it to be sewn in so it can't move off this Velcro patch because it needs to be kept in place. So, in order to line everything up, I'm going to get my nappies that I've already got. If you don't have them, it's okay. Uh, it's just, this will show you which way the nappies are supposed to be. If you are just making them as a set and it doesn't really matter, as long as they're both a different way, then it will know that it's having the nappy swapped over. So, I want that to be the one for the black patch. I'm going to pull this as close up as I can. Keep the magnet nice and close to the top and then put the patch on. I think I like it to go that way. We're going to line it up because that's really badly lined up. There we go, about there. Maybe over a bit. How's that? Now I'm just going to sew across, down the square, and then this way without the magnet in there. And then I'll come back and I'll slide the magnet in and then I'll go across the top and that will be the end of it. Because it's a little bit tricky sewing with such a strong magnet while it's inside the nappy. The magnets that I purchased are 30 millimeters by five millimeters. These ones are probably a little bit too big. Um, perhaps um, maybe like 28, 27 mil by, I feel like it's five mil because these ones are quite thick in the nappy. So by like, so like 25, 27, by 5 mil, but these ones are 30 and these ones are, I don't see where there's a problem with them. I'm also just going to say those magnets cost a fortune. They're a rare earth magnet and the size and because they're so strong, they honestly cost a lot of money. So you can see that I've sewn across, down, across, up, and across. And now all that's left open is the part above the Velcro patch. So I can have this lined up. Again, put it in whatever way you want to. I want it to match the same. So we're going to place the magnet in. And then we're going to sew across the top. Now, there is a magnet in here and this part is metal, so you can imagine that it's going to be a little bit of fun to try and move around, but it's not too bad. ends off. And that 
is a Gen 6 nappy all done. So it's exactly the same to make the nappy and just the sensor is different. So you want the magnet to sit as high as possible. If you want to, to make it sit higher, I might actually run a second stitch through here now so that the, nap the magnet stays as high as possible. And when you're trying to get the magnet off, just slide it. It's a lot easier than trying to pull at it. So the nappy is staying a lot higher. If you want to use black stitching, go ahead. If you want to use green, pink, purple, whatever. I like to sew in white because then I don't have to change the bobbin so much. So I just sew everything in white unless I have to sew it in black. But I think that this looks better because you're going to see this more than you're going to see this. Now I'm just going to do the other one. So I'll time lapse that. There are our two sets of nappies made. We have the Generation 6 with the magnets in them and the Real Care 2, 2 Plus and 3 nappies with the RFID sensors in them. I hope that this helped you make some new nappies for your Real Cares or spruce up the ones that you've got. And if you have any more questions about Real Cares, have a look on my channel because I have a bunch of other videos on Real Care babies in general. Have a good day. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.